Frameworks for Internal Medicine is a textbook for students, residents, and all practicing clinicians. The book was written to aid in the process of diagnostic reasoning. There are so many problems within the discipline of internal medicine, and each is associated with a long differential diagnosis. This can be intimidating to students. Skilled clinicians organize those differential diagnoses into frameworks, which serve to enhance recall and allow a diagnostician to sort through the potential causes in a systematic way. This makes the process of diagnostic reasoning simpler and more efficient and provides students with a foundation from which they should be building their medical knowledge. When a patient presents with a problem such as weakness, for example, students are often overwhelmed. It's helpful to organize the differential into anatomic subcategories, including upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron, neuromuscular junction, and muscle. Now it becomes easier to recall the long list of causes of weakness. Frameworks are the backbone of the text. You will find one for 50 of the most common problems within internal medicine, spanning all of the major disciplines from cardiology to rheumatology. While frameworks are its backbone, there is much more to the book than the frameworks themselves. Each chapter starts off with a real case. For example, here is a chapter on Cushing syndrome from the endocrinology section. Using a question and answer format, the chapter begins to unfold and the reader will learn pearls of information about the topic along the way. Here the chapter continues to unfold and the framework is beginning to assemble. When a patient presents with Cushing syndrome, we want to know is it ACTH dependent or ACTH independent, which helps us narrow the differential diagnosis. This is how a skilled endocrinologist approaches a patient with this syndrome. And by the end of the chapter, the full framework is constructed. The chapter then circles back to the case and ends with key points. One way students use the book is as a leisurely study tool. Perhaps you want to learn more about anemia or hyponatremia or hypoxemia. Reading those chapters front to back will provide you with all of the fundamental information you would want to know while also organizing the differential diagnosis into a framework. The other way to use the book is as a quick reference guide in the hospital and clinic environments. When a patient presents with chest pain, for example, students can quickly reference the framework to ensure that their approach to the problem is sound and they are not forgetting parts of the differential diagnosis. Here is the framework for hypoxemia. And this is the framework for hypotension. There are 50 frameworks within the text and all are common problems within the field of internal medicine. If you are a student who wants help organizing and approaching the common problems that patients present with, please consider frameworks for internal medicine.